Hey friends, welcome. If you're new here, welcome back. If you've been around for a while, my name is Emily. I tutor the four to seven year olds in our CC community. So today I'm going to share with you what we did for Tin Whistle for week nine. The first thing we did was we reviewed how to follow the conductor. I asked them, who's the conductor? I'm the conductor. You have to leave your tin whistles on their beds. This is the tin whistle's bed. It's a washcloth. You have to leave the tin whistles on their beds on the table until I tell you to raise them up. I do that by doing this with my hands. So they always have to keep their eyes on me to see what I'm telling them to do. You can lift your tin whistle up to your mouth, but until I count you in, you don't play it. So I'll say one, two, ready, play. And they can play after that. And then at the end of the song, I do this for them to stop playing and put their tin whistle back down on its bed. As a class, we sang Mary Had a Little Lamb, so I counted them in. That was good practice for them watching me. As we sang, I used my hands to count the beats. So that was a good introduction for them to see that the notes had different lengths. Um, so Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. So on the lamb part, you are showing them there's two beats by doing this with your hand. And then at the end for snow, all the kids only held it for like two beats, but I held it all the way out for the, the four beats. And then I commented on that, how I had held it out for longer and it was at the end of the song and did they notice anything on their music that looked different about that last note. We had this music in front of us so they were able to look at it. I told them to look at the notes, not the tin whistle part up here. So you can see that's a whole note. While we had this out, I just asked them to look at all of the different notes on here and to see if they noticed any similarity, similarities or differences between what the notes looked like and they noticed some of them were black, some of them were empty, some had lines on them, others didn't. So they really noticed a lot about the notes. So we were attending to the notes when we were doing that. Then I explained how musical notes are like learning the alphabet. For reading, musical notes allow us to play music like learning the alphabet allows us to read. After that, we looked at the staff. So again, we used our song here. We looked at the staff. I asked, I showed the kids what the staff was. It's these lines with spaces in between it. And I asked them to count the lines, raise their hand when they had counted it. Um, so they said there was five lines. And then I asked them to count the spaces and they counted those and there's four spaces. So a staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. So then we reviewed which hand is our left hand. So we all raised our left hand. I reminded them that our left hand goes on top. So we all practice putting our left hand on top. I reminded the children of the proper position when holding a tin whistle that you want your finger pads to be on there and not your fingertips and that you want to hold it at an angle like this, not, not up like this, not down like this, and you want to sit up straight. So then we practiced playing our different note values. Before we practiced playing, I went over what each of the note values were. For a whole note, you'd hold for four beats. So this is how we did that. Ta. So I just clapped on the first beat and then used my hands to signify the other beats. And we said ta for the whole four beats. So ta. Then we had the kids practice playing it. First, I demonstrated how to play it. So I counted myself in and I played a note for the four beats. And then I counted the kids in, they did the same thing. Um, and we played a whole note three times. Our curriculum tells us to do it three times for each note. Um, and you can switch up the different notes. I only had them do B, I believe, just the first finger for a half note. I taught it like this, ta, ta. So that's two half notes. Or if you wanna do one half note, you can say ta. So then we did the same thing where I demonstrated it on my tin whistle and then they did it after me three times. For the quarter note, we did ta, 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 ta. And for the eighth note, I explained to them ahead of time that it's faster than all of the other notes we've learned so far. 
and so we say T T T T to make it seem even faster. So for every clap, you're saying T T twice, and you're gonna clap four times. So you'd say T T eight times. So it goes like this: T T T T T T T T. So then I handed out this handout I got from the sandbox for this week from CC Connected. So we went over all the notes and um, we started with the whole note. We reviewed the counting for the whole note, the ta, and we said that it had four counts. Then I drew it up on the board. I showed them it's just a circle. It can either, I showed them how it can either be on a line or in a space. Um, and so then I had them just trace one of them on this handout. I had brought pencils down for them to use. Then next we went over our half note. Ta, ta. On my board I kept my whole notes and I just added the stem to it. And you can see down here there's the terminology flag, stem, head. So I tried to use that when describing how to draw the notes. So we just added a stem to our whole note to make it into a half note. And then we did our quarter notes. So for the quarter note, we just colored in the head here. And then our eighth notes have the flag on them. So I showed them how to draw these by just adding the flag to the quarter note. But I also showed them how eighth notes would look if they were connected. So um, drawing two right next to each other with a line so if these were drawn here, you just have a line connecting the top. That's another way you might see a, a eighth note. We practiced drawing the treble clef. So the way I taught that was I drew up on the board. We drew the dot at the bottom and a J. So we made a J, then a backwards S and a curly Q. And you can use the terminology you used from oils so you could say this is a curved line. We did a lot of curly cues when we were doing our curved lines in oils, so that might be helpful for you here. One of the parents in class was telling me you have to draw this treble clef on a certain line to make it a G. I, I don't know about that. If it's something you're interested in, you can look into it. I just wanted to share it with you in case you wanna really be on top of it, but I was just doing mainly what I had learned from the curriculum. Um, so I just used this handout. I also brought these for the kids to practice their treble clefts, but we ran out of time, so I sent them home with them. Um, I have a printable for this. It was on the old CC Connected. I will try and upload it on the new one and put a link to that in the description. And then to finish off the class, this was really fun. We did it last year and I think it's a great visual and like manipulative for the kids to understand the values of the notes a little bit better. So this came from a handout from a website I found. So I will link that in the description as well so you can get a copy of it. It came with more notes than these, um, but I'm, I only, gave these notes to the kids because these were the ones we were studying. So last year what I did was I had cut every one into different pieces so the kids actually individually had to put like eight eighth notes under here but I was just running a little short on time this week so I did it like this and it was more manageable for me honestly to hand it out like this. So I told the parents if they wanted to play with it at home they could cut them up themselves. So this is just a really good visual for the kids to see two half notes is the same length as a whole note, four quarter notes is the same length as a whole note or two half notes. And then I asked them to count these because there's eight eighth notes. So that can help them remember. That's why it's called an eighth note because there's eight of them in a whole note. So this is so helpful. I really like using this. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. I did make a few short videos about Tin Whistle that I will link in the description here. So you can go check those out too. I have one on classroom management, which I kind of went over a little bit in this video. And I have another one on the Tin Whistle song we use to, to learn the different parts of the Tin Whistle. So yeah, we're, you, we're learning music theory and it's really fun to see the kids like make the connections. So I hope you enjoy Tin Whistle this week. 
and I'll see you next week. Bye.